Evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, planning committee meeting of Tamworth Borough Council for July. Uh, for the benefit of anyone watching on the video later, I'm Councillor John Chesworth, uh, Chairman of the committee. Uh, for those who know me, I have a cold, don't worry, I don't have COVID, I've taken a negative test this afternoon. Um, so no worries on that score. Uh, if we have a fire alarm, it won't be a drill, it will be genuine, so you need to evacuate the building. Uh, for those who don't know, leave the room at the back, the door you came in through, uh, go down to the uh, end of the corridor, uh, turn left, sorry, in the corridor, through the fire doors and go down the stairs to the ground floor and follow the signs out of the building. If you're in any doubt, just follow me, because I'll be out first. Uh, we have one speaker this evening. Uh, you'll have three minutes to complete your speech. Uh, you will be informed when your time begins, and the time remaining will be displayed on the presentation screen where there'll be a countdown timer. Once the three minutes is over, you'll be asked to stay quiet for the rest of the meeting. Uh, any other members of the public, uh, please also remain quiet at all times through the meeting. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the uh, internet to YouTube after the meeting has finished. And finally, uh, with the exception of Anna, may I remind you to switch off your or silence your mobile phones. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the agenda when I can find it. There it is. Right, item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. We have Councillor Paul Brindley, Councillor Thomas Jay, and there was one other that's escaped me. Councillor Pritchard, that's right, Stephen Pritchard. I think, other than that, we're all here. Uh, so, thank you very much. Number two on the agenda, minutes of the previous meeting, uh, they have been circulated. Uh, are there any comments on those minutes? Councillor Goodall. Happy to move them. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Rogers. All in favour of me signing those minutes? It's unanimous. That's unanimous. Thank you. Item three on the agenda. Uh, are there any declarations of interest? I see none. So we move to item four, which is applications for consideration. Uh, we've got one application on the uh, on the agenda this evening. It's number triple zero four slash twenty twenty one. It's land adjacent to the co-op garage on the Bone Hill Road. Uh, I'm going to invite Sally Price to present on that application. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Chair. The application is for full planning permission for the construction of a flat-roofed three-storey office building with a car park totalling 39 spaces, and it's a resubmission of application 115-2020. The proposal... If we go to the next slide, please. The proposal is for a new office building at the edge of the pedestrianised... Uh, Lady Bridge, adjacent to the disused repair garage, the co-op garage, and housing comprising flats and small houses. It's, it's just along from the Lady Bridge pub and the uh, the Premier Inn, which is the sort of circular building in the middle of the, the picture. If we move to the next slide, please. So that just shows the a rough out outline of the site. Um, to the rear, there's open fields on the fl on the floodplain. Can't can't actually see the river there, I don't think. But the flood floodplain of the River Tame, and it's close to the confluence with the um, with the anchor. Uh, if we move on to the photos, there's some views to the site and surroundings. Um, to, you can just about see on the bottom right photo there is a, a distant view of the castle um, and you can also see um, the edge of the housing directly opposite. Perhaps go to the next. Yeah, there's some further pictures of the views just around and about the site showing the existing housing. Yeah, if we go to the next one please. Um, the scheme proposes three-storey office building which is uh, pr proposed as the headquarters for our homes and our partnerships they're currently located on a business park in Amington but are outgrowing their site due to expansion 
the elevations as shown there uh, shows the offices on three stories and a modern bespoke building with a flat roof design. Materials are, are cladded walls and a substantial amount of glazing. The building is set at one edge of the site with parking to the side, including 39 spaces. That's the, the layout of the site shown there. Um, as you can see from the, from the report, there's a number of issues to consider. The first, I'll just run through some of them, not, not in the same order, I'm afraid, as, as the report, but um, I'll just briefly outline. The, the first issue was the design. Um, this has been substantially reduced in scale and amended to better fit with the surrounding dwellings. Um, which is something that we now find to be acceptable. If you perhaps go back to the elevations for that one, please, the one before. That's it. Thank you. Um, the, the second issue regards the heritage impacts. And as you see from the report, um, it's relatively close to the, to the castle. And there's some impact on the setting of the castle and the, the listed Lady Bridge. We've consulted with the Conservation Officer and also with Historic England, both of whom consider that this has followed the necessary tests when considering heritage assets, and that the proposal would therefore preserve and enhance the character of those assets. So that, that aspect has been uh, considered to be acceptable. Thirdly, in respect of the layout, if we perhaps go to the next slide, um, Jody, and the next one, the layout one, that one, yeah. You see at the front of the site, um, there's a row of trees. Uh, they are protected trees. So in respect of those trees and biodiversity, the relevant bodies have been consulted and they accept that the proposals are acceptable, subject to various conditions. Uh, fourthly, Staffordshire County Council Highways consider the proposals to be acceptable in terms of parking, highway safety and traffic generation. Um, I would point out there is an error in the report in paragraph 6.4.4, which is on page 15, I think. Um, and the last, the last line should read that it's compliant with the local plan and interest of highway safety. The, the report says it's contrary to it. Apologies for that. Um, so those those matters above are all all considered to be, by your officers to be acceptable and in accordance with policies. However, as you see from the report, there are three reasons for refusal. Two of which regarding the principle of the use in this location, and there's also a third reason in respect of a technical matter on drainage. The the key issue is that offices are considered to be a main, main town centre use, whereas this is an allocated housing site. The allocation is site 591 in the local plan. You can just see that coloured sort of um, pinky brown at the bottom of the, the picture. Um, it's, it's directly adjoining another site 593, which is also allocated for housing, but in a different ownership. The local plan or the policies most important in the consideration of this proposal are not considered to be out of date, so the local plan is the starting point for your decision. The local plan is, however, five years old and um, the, the policy should be re reviewed every five years as required by the, the National Planning Policy Framework and updated as necessary. The local plan policies were reviewed last year and some inconsistencies were identified, but the strategic housing policies were, however, considered up to date, and as a whole, the plan is not out of date. The main thrust of the housing and retail policies are considered consistent with the National Planning Policy Framework, and so they should be attributed full weight in your decision making. So by virtue of the housing allocation, the in-principle acceptability of the proposed use is not acceptable as it would remove a site for housing purposes. 
The applicants think our approach is incorrect and consider that the plan is out of date and also that policy HG1 on housing does not actually state that nothing other than housing should go on an allocated housing site. You have also received some representations uh, regarding that, that aspect. The second part of the principal issue is that offices are considered to be a town centre use and therefore should be located in the town centre. Policy EC1, hierarchy of centres for town centres, for town centre uses, sorry, states that applicants must supply a sequential test to show that no other site is available or suitable. The approach seeks to focus new development within existing town centres, where only if sites within or on the edge of the centre are not suitable or available, will be an out of centre will an out of centre site be appropriate? The application site located on Bone Hill Road is an out of centre site, which is why the application of the sequential assess assessment to site selection is necessary. The agents argue that it is edge of centre, but it is outside of the town centre boundary. In addition, the applicant has not yet demonstrated that the sequential test has been achieved, which would result in a further policy conflict. In accordance with the relevant guidance and case law, the, this, the sequential test needs to consider the availability of more centrally located opportunities. The officers have taken independent advice from a specialist, route, uh, from specialist consultants on this issue who suggests that two sites are available, that being within the Gungate development area owned by the council and also a site on, on Litchfield Street. So this adds a further conflict with the policy, the fact that those sites are available. As you are aware, we have to consider any material considerations when making planning decisions and balance them out, giving appropriate weight to each element. So as indicated in the report, other material material considerations have been taken into account. These include the, the NPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, which I've already mentioned, and also that, that there's a historic planning consent. A scheme for 14 dwellings and three commercial units was first refused in 2015, then revised and eventually approved in January 2017. But this has never been implemented and has now lapsed. That scheme was primarily residential, however, and therefore complied with policy. The weight that can be attributed to the historic consent is considered to be limited. Overall, there are considered to be no benefits in terms of the development's overall suitability that would override the identified policy harm. It is therefore clear that the proposal will not be in accordance with the local plan and would therefore not result in sustainable development and should therefore be refused for the two reasons as indicated in the report on the two policy issues. Added to all of that, there also remains a technical drainage issue and the Environment Agency are not satisfied in respect of flood risk. So that falls to the, the third reason as indicated in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Sally, for that presentation. Um, you did mention there that there was some correspondence um, sent to us by uh, the applicant or their agents. Can I just, on a show of hands, confirm that everybody had that correspondence, please? Got everyone bar Councillor Box. Have you not? Yeah, you have. Right. OK, good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to invite Mr. David Pendle at this point to come forward um, as our speaker, speaking on behalf of the applicant. Thanks, Mr. Pendle. If you take your seat, uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, you'll have three minutes to speak from when you commence speaking. Um, and uh, I will ask you to stop if you reach the three minutes. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you tonight as we decide the future for the land at Bone Hill Road and the future for our homes and our partnerships and their relationship with the town. I'm joined tonight by Steve Thompson, the Managing Director of OWL, who's here to show that commitment to you. 
You have a recommendation before you to refuse the application. It will be no surprise to you to understand that we disagree with that. I've written to you already, um, as mentioned, to detail our, our position, and I won't regurgitate that to you or read it out. But I hope you don't mind me briefly explaining um, our view on the proposed reasons for refusal. As you know, the site is allocated would like to save it. Doing so, you will support local Thanks, government. Mr. Pendle. Sorry, I'm have to stop you there. I did give you an extra few seconds for my uh, for my interruption. So, uh, thank you very much. If you feel free to uh, res take your seat, thank you. Okay, at this point, um, I'll invite questions from any members to officers. Would anyone like to uh, Would anyone like to start off? I don't know who got there first. I'll take Councillor Box first. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, it looks very nice, and it's nice to see jobs being put in with housing development as well. But it looks open plan, and I'm a bit concerned. It looks like uh, an open invitation for travellers. Will it be fenced off or walls built round it or anything? Thank you, Councillor Box. Sally? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, yeah, the, the site at the moment is is uh, has got a hedge and a fence around it, um, and there are proposals for landscaping as part of the scheme. So it won't be, it won't be completely open. There will be a car park, but um, that will that will be contained. Yeah, that's what I was concerned about. Thank you, Chair. You're okay with that, Councillor Box? Here, Councillor Harper, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, Really, I'd, I'd just like to know, uh, firstly, uh, why the previous uh, approved application was uh, was not taken up. It was for a mixed-use development of two restaurants, business hub, and 14 apartments. It was approved in 2016, but um, presumably withdrawn or, or not proceeded with. Can anyone tell me why that happened? 
Thank you, Councillor Harper. I think the answer was it, we, we don't know the answer. Uh, is that correct, Sally? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, it was never never pursued, never taken up. So, um, yeah, and it's now lapsed. Thanks, Sally. Councillor Harper? Thank you very much. It seems a shame. I remember that uh, particular application quite, uh, quite well because I was on a conservation committee in those days and we we spent much 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 time discussing it and thought that it had uh, reached a really a decent uh, compromise and it's a shame that it didn't go ahead um my own particular view on this one is that i okay, so, must, sorry are we we're just on questions at the minute rather than debate okay i beg your pardon so if you've got any Shut further up. questions Happy to take them. No, no, I'll, I'll let someone else go. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Are there any further questions for officers? Councillor Bailey. Yeah, just a question around the flood risk. So I'm a little bit confused. If, if um, the site was allowed to be developed, would there be a flood risk in that area? Thanks, Councillor Bailey. Sally. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Chairman. It's, it's a technical technical issue. Um, the the agents have put forward some considerable considerable sorry considerable um, detailed information regarding the the, uh, the flood risk. Um, but the local lead flood authority and the environment agency have both seen these and. Essentially, they need some further detail. So at the moment, they're saying that it hasn't satisfied their, their requirements and that there could be um, a risk of flooding, but um, it's, it's probably something that can be sorted out by uh, further details or, or, uh, or would be, they, would, they would be required to, um, to provide some further, further information to satisfy them. Thank you, Sally. Councillor Bailey, are you okay with that? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Councillor Greatrix next. Thank you, Chair. Um, is it considered that the 39 car parking spaces are going to be adequate? Because I think the gentleman said um, the number of jobs that would be created there would be far in excess of 39. Sally? Yes, Chairman. Um, yeah, 39 spaces was, was the... Um, was in relation to the size of the building, so uh, there are standards that require so many spaces per, per floor space, um, and that's been accepted by the Highways Authority. Um, also in relation to the, to the location, if it's in a relatively sustainable location, then um, less car parking spaces are, abs are needed for, for the development. So as I say, Staffs County Council have accepted it, so we've got no reason to uh, to go against what they've said. Thanks, Sally. Councillor Greatrix, does that cover your question? Thanks. Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, to me, it seems that the sequential test is possibly the main issue we have to deal with here. Um, you said earlier that there were two sites in Gungate and Litchfield Street. Um, have we any, or do we know why these sites are not acceptable or not desirable? Sally, please. Yes, yeah, so the, the applicants have put forward a number of sites. Um, they put, well, they, they did a sequential test that included 11 sites altogether, of which four were in the town centre. Um, looking at the, the details of them, there were only two out of out of all of, all of the eleven that had that were suitable at all for the scale of the building, for the size of, size of site that they needed. Um, the the information that has been put forward is in relation to availability of the site, the Gungate site, particularly the applicants or the agents say that it's that it's not suitable because. Um, they can't deliver it in a, in a suitable time scale. Um, and the, the Litchfield Road site, um, they put forward costs for, sorry, the value for that, um, 
which exceeds their requirements and they would have to demolish a building in order to um, develop the site. So in that, in that respect, their, their uh, conclusion is that those sites aren't suitable or available for them. Thanks, Sally. Councillor Harper, is that, uh, is that answering your question? So I'm right in thinking the Gungate site is suitable apart from the fact that there would be some delay in going ahead with it. Is that the only reason for not going into Gungate? Yeah, yes, yeah, as far as I understand, yes, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a vacant site. Thanks, Councillor Helper. Thank okay, have we got any further questions? I can't see any, so we'll move to debate at this point. Does anybody want to start us off? Councillor Goodall. Goodall, I think that was you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm kind of pleased in many respects that the that OWL have outgrown their current location. Um, I think it demonstrates that they're, they're working well as a business. And I'm not against the design of the building either that's proposed. That said, it, it doesn't sort of fit my personal vision of, of what sort of development I'd like to see there. And I'm not convinced at the moment that it that it fits in with our local plan and housing policy. And um, I'll leave it there for the moment and, 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 uh, and listen to what other, what other members have to say on it. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. Does anybody else want to join in? Councillor Harper. I do beg your pardon. I don't want to uh, take over or anything, but um, just my own thoughts on this. I've been down to the site earlier earlier today and I had a very good look around. Um, it is a mess at the moment. The Crown Garage is in a shocking state. And um, I can uh, envisage this particular building being in situ. Personally, I would rather the area stays as it was because um, uh, we, the most important thing is the fabulous view over Lady Meadow uh, towards the castle and Lady Bridge. Uh, but as we all know, progress has an insatiable master and uh, constantly needs feeding with ever more land to satisfy its ravenous appetite. Um, but if development has to take place, I'd rather more, I'd be rather more presupposed to see um, an impressive, bespoke landmark building serving as uh, as an impressive feature of the sudden entrance or the sudden gateway to Tamworth. Uh, I'd rather see that than a row of uh, houses or or flats, which seems to be what uh, what we have in mind. Um, What we perhaps ought to look at is um, the developer or the uh, our, our, what, would, what would they what, would, what they would get from this building uh, is the best view in Tamworth, I think. It's a panoramic panoramic scenes over Lady Meadow with the River Tame meandering past Lady Bridge and Tamworth Castle in the distance. Uh, it's a beautiful view, and um, it would be a corporate. Um, treasure to have that um, and I suspect that may have quite a lot to do with wanting this particular location you've also got the close proximity of the Beef Eater restaurant and the Premier Inn and you would be slap bang between the town centre and Venturia, and Ventura Park it's a perfect location and quite frankly if I was wanting to build a, a really impressive headquarters, I can't think of a better site. Um, however, what would this do to Tamworth? Um, this building is a modernist three-story flat-roofed office building with a private car park 
which obviously would not be of any benefit to the people of Tamworth. Um, the building materials are, are normal um, materials used on these sorts of, um, of buildings of these days. Um, I'm always very suspicious when anybody puts cladding onto a building's design because cladding merely disguises poor architecture. That's only my personal view, mind, but uh, uh, but I I suspect that the building itself is a fine building, and um, as I say, I think it would make it could make a, a nice landmark entrance gateway into the town. If it were shoved up onto the Crown Garage site, it would be even better. That would be the perfect site for it. But obviously, uh, that's not not a case. Um, so the view is is of a prime um, consideration, or I suspect. Um, as for the jobs, I understand most of the jobs are going to be for people to re relocate from wherever they are at the moment. So actually, you won't be creating any new jobs, perhaps a, a cleaners or receptionists or something, but um, fundamentally, there won't be any new jobs created by this. And as for the foot footfall, uh, into the town centre. My own experience of working in offices are that people arrive in their cars, they go into their office, they take a packed lunch with them at lunchtime, have their lunch at their desk, at the end of the day get into their car and go home, and very rarely actually go into the town or use local facilities. This of course could change at Christmas when they go to the beef eater for a Christmas booze up or something, but um, uh, I don't really see an awful lot of football uh, footfall from or to the building. Uh, the flooding threat is a threat. I know the area well, and I've um, I've waded through the former Jolly Sailor pub that used to stand there up to my knees in flood water. So I know the problems they have up there or around that area. And of course, there are. Um, Houses, or there's going to be a housing development put on the Crown Garage site. Um, so those are the the main things I, I particularly find a problem with. But really, I suppose I'm not a fan of houses being put on the site, but they have been put into the local plan. And once you've made a decision on something, you can't really retract it unless there's a darn good reason for it. So um, that's the problem I have with this development, even though I would love to bend over backwards to help a local firm who offer a valuable service and of whom Tamworth should be rightly proud. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Councillor Wade. Evening. As you know, I work in construction myself. Yeah, and, and the build, as what I could see, is a beautiful build. And in London, where primarily I work, everything is cladded. And some of the buildings are outstanding, cladded. But reading what Hal sent me on the email for local jobs in construction, Maybe, but it depends on who they're going to use as a developer. Because for the years I've, I've been in construction, if you could land or walk or mace or wait, they all use their own people. So nothing's going to be local. No jobs are going to be created local in construction. Because they have a report with their own firms of views for years and years and years. We see the same people on different sites all the time. So there's going to be no local jobs, construction-wise, I don't think. And um, the footfall, as I know, I go to work, I take a back lunch, I sit down in the canteen, where the site is, they can walk to McDonald's five minutes away, walk to KFC five minutes away. So they're not going to spend 15, 20 minutes walking into town for a sausage roll from Greg's. So to me, the... The, the office people ain't going to go and support local businesses in the town centre. 
they'll drive good to Mackey's and, and support the big companies at KFC and Mackey's and stuff like that. I mean, the maintenance and the support, that tends to get tendons out to a, a, a private firm, they have their own workers, so nothing's going to, to me, nothing's going to come local to, say, Mrs. Bush down the road who, 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 who mops and sweeps office buildings, not going to go to somebody like them, it's going to go to a big company who already has their own workers. And I mean, they say they're going to move from the, 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 where they are now and, and, and time of risk losing 40 jobs. I don't want anybody to lose a job. Times have changed, people work from home now, so the additional jobs what could be made, I just imagine people could work at home and, and, and still do that job. But the build itself, I think it's an outstanding build, and I think we should all take that into consideration. Looking at it, it the email I had, it says it, you know, it could be a award-winning build, possibly could win awards of some sort. But you go away there, they have come up with a nice build to the detrimental of losing houses, what people so desperately need. I don't know. So I think it's all down to us to decide what is best. Because the build is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I have no fault with the build. And the the flooding and, and that there's ways they can they, they, they can sort the flooding out and, and stuff if if our arms wants to go forward with it. So, I think go away up the options of do we support a local company? Well, that's all. But that's what we're here for. Or do we support local people who need housing? I think that's the balance. What we got away up, I do. Because I think the bill is outstanding. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Wade. Does anybody else want to add to the debate at this point? Can't see any hands. I'll add my two pen for what it's worth. Um, I agree the building possibly could um, look fantastic. Um, I think I need to uh, consider um, the, the reasons on the report and the pros and cons of those reasons. Um, uh, for me, the first the first question is uh, looking at the, at the purpose of the building. So it's an office block, and um, there's one or two of us in here that were on planning in 2017. Uh, and uh, I think that if I'm right, Sally will perhaps nod at me if I'm right. The previous application that was granted was for um, restaurants with flats on top. Uh, I forget how many flats, but it was it was a mixed use building. Whereas at the moment we're looking at um, a, 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 an office block in totality. Uh, is that right? Is that wrong? Uh, it, it doesn't meet the, the local plan. Uh, the local plan still stands firm as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but equally, as we heard the speaker say, it's only a small number of uh, the, a small percentage of our housing allocation. Uh, what weight, therefore, do we place on that? That's the, f the first question. Uh, the sequential test is what it is. Uh, the, there are other sites available. Uh, one of those that was identified won't be available for some time. I accept that. Uh, but it is a, an available site. Uh, the other one is available but needs some, some work and some money spending on it. And then there's the flood risk, uh, which is still an issue. Um, I'll let others contribute for now, but I think we need to weigh up uh, the pros and cons of what's on the report, uh, first of all. So is there anyone else that wants to chip in? No, Councillor Harper. 
I'm sorry, uh, once again, looking at this report, which actually I do think is a, su a superb report, and it's very well reasoned and what, very well put, put together by the officers. I think there are a lot of um, compelling um, issues that, uh, that it highlights. But my own personal feeling would be that um, <coughs> we should be trying to accommodate this fine company as best we can, but not necessarily on this site, which um, would be a it would be a loan office block in an area that um, there aren't any other office blocks or anything like that. I think it would be a huge benefit to the town if it were to come into the town, um, particularly the Gungate site, which um, which I can can see as being perfect. And my own feeling would be that every effort should be made to try and accommodate this company on the Gungate site and try, however we may, to improve the timelines so that um, so that this can be done as quickly as possible. And um, we should we should really be trying to uh, to look after this company, um, but not necessarily on this side. That's my own particular view, anyway. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Councillor Wade. I mean, council opera is going on about, not on that side, but a couple of years back, that site was going to be a restaurant. And that was approved. So I can't see the reason why that can't be approved. Uh, no, it, it was a restaurant and yes, the Harper just accommodation and residential. If I can bring it back, please. It was, um, yeah, it was a combined... Uh, use so it was uh, it was for restaurant and uh, for flats above. I think it was two floors of flats above. Um, it came to committee first as an issues paper, and there was a huge debate about the design of that particular application. Uh, and then it came subsequently to committee and was approved, but was never seen through. Uh, does anybody want to make any further contribution to the debate or move a motion, please? Councillor Grivel, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, based based on my previous comments and and the discussion we've 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 had so far, um, my view is that it doesn't fit the the local plan and our, our housing policy, um, and and and. and Unfortunately, so in some some respects, but I, I feel a different vision in my mind, and so um, I move the report that we refuse the uh, the application. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. That's a, a move a motion to move uh, the report. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Uh, Councillor Maycock indicated first. Thank you. At that point, then, I've, uh, I've got a motion, I've got a proposer, a seconder, uh, so we'll move to the vote. All those in favour of the motion to refuse the application, please. I've got seven. <laughs> that is seven. Uh, and Against. Can't see any. Abstentions. Three. So by uh, we've got seven voting for, none against, three abstentions. So the motion to refuse that application on the for the reasons laid out in the report uh, has been accepted. So I thank you all for your contributions to the meeting. Uh, call the meeting to a halt at uh, 6.44. Thank you all.